Hello all, it's time for another week in Awana. I hope you all had a nice Thanksgiving, um, had some good food and some good time with uh, the people in your house and uh, whoever else you were able to spend time with, maybe on Zoom or online or over the phone. I uh, trust that you had a, a nice break from school. I know my kids enjoyed it quite a bit, um, having a little break from the e-learning. So I hope that that was a, a nice time to rest and recharge, and uh, that now that we're we're back in it in another week and uh, moving towards Christmas, as you can see, I put my uh, little nativity set up here because we are officially in the season of Advent. It started this Sunday, and those are the Sundays that lead us up to Christmas. During the time of Advent, uh, we prepare our hearts for Christ's birth on Christmas that we celebrate. We prepare ourselves uh, spiritually by praying, reading the Bible, um, watching church online or going in person, and uh, really preparing the way um, in ourselves to be reminded of that gift of the birth of Jesus Christ, the birth of our Savior. So with that being said, I'd like us to say a little opening prayer. So if you could fold your hands and close your eyes, that would be wonderful. All right. Okay. Lord, we come to you today, first of all, to thank you that even in this time of challenge and uncertainty, we still have blessings. We still have things to be thankful for, to be grateful for, even when they don't look the way that we're used to. We thank you for the many blessings that we have, and we pray for those who are less fortunate, those who are suffering during the pandemic, um, financially, with their health, um, with family relationships, with jobs, with the pressures of e-learning. We pray that you would be with all of us and you help us through this time. And we thank you again for the ways that you've already helped us and for opportunities to continue to learn more about you and how important you can be in our lives and how you being our savior transforms our lives and makes us a new creation. We ask all of this in your holy name. Amen. All right, I think we're going to do the pledges now. So if you guys want to stand up and put your hands over your heart, um, I'm not going to stand up right now because then my head will not be in the video and that doesn't seem quite right. So I'm going to stay seated and we'll go ahead and get started with our pledges. All right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I pledge allegiance to the Awana flag, which stands for the Awana clubs, whose goal is to reach boys and girls with the gospel of Christ and train them to serve Him. Yes, she 
great things he has done for us. All right. That was fun. And uh, now it's time for our lesson. Our lesson this week is that uh, Jesus is the good shepherd and the good shepherd knows and leads his sheep. And our verse for today comes from, I'll grab my Bible here, from the book of John, uh, chapter 10, verse 27. And the verse says, My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. Now, what does that mean? I think we know that we aren't sheep, right? But if we think back to, you know, Christmas and our nativity scene, there's usually some wise men and some shepherds. In this case, I'm going to pretend that Joseph is the shepherd because my shepherd is missing. So at any rate, what do shepherds do? Shepherds take care of the sheep. And what does that mean? If you're a shepherd that takes care of your sheep, you get up very early in the morning, back in biblical times, and you go to the pen where the sheep are are, are kept overnight. And what the shepherd would do then is he would call out to his sheep. And there would be lots of sheep there. Some are his, some are the property of other shepherds, lots of sheep. And when the shepherd would call out to his sheep, his sheep would hear his voice and they would recognize it and they would know to follow him. And so his sheep would come out of the uh, the pen that they were in and they would follow their shepherd out to the pasture. And when they got out to the pasture, they'd basically spend the rest of the day out there uh, grazing on grasses and plants and uh, finding streams and stuff to drink from that the shepherd knew were 
good places to take them. He knew where the good food was. He knew where the, the best, cleanest water was because he knew that it was his job to take care of those sheep. They were his, and he was going to make sure that they got the best care he could possibly give them. And then, at the end of the night, he would take those sheep back to the pen where they would spend the night. Um, some shepherds would stay out overnight, but many would take them back to a pen where they would be safe from wolves or whatever other animals might be out there that would be dangerous to the sheep. And as those sheep would go into that pen, the shepherd, being a good shepherd, he would count them to make sure that every single shepherd had made it back. And if he discovered that one of the sheep had wandered off, he would immediately leave those sheep in that pen and he would go and he would find that lost sheep and bring it back because he was a good shepherd and he wanted to make sure that every single one of the sheep that he was responsible for, that he cared for, was safe and taken care of and had everything that it needed. And so that's what we're talking about when we talk about the good shepherd or what being a good shepherd means. Now in that uh, verse in the, in the Bible I was holding up, um, Jesus calls himself the good shepherd. Now, I think we can see beyond, we can see the image that he's painting, that Jesus is painting when he says that in that scripture. He's saying he is the good shepherd. And what does that mean? If Jesus is our shepherd, even though we are not actually sheep, we know that we can count on him to care for us, to lead us, to help us when we need help, to be there for us in our highest highs and our lowest lows, to always be there. And that's the beauty of seeing Jesus as our good shepherd. That's the kind of love and care that Jesus shows us if we have chosen to follow him. Now, what does that mean to choose to follow the good shepherd that is Jesus? Um, what that means is that we have chosen to give our lives to him, to dedicate ourselves to Jesus, to call him our shepherd, our leader, our, our first a point of connection when we want to celebrate something or when we're sad or worried or afraid or maybe we just can't sleep. We can trust that Jesus is our good shepherd because we have invited him to be in our hearts. We've invited him to be our God, our Savior, to have that relationship with him, like the shepherd that I was talking about, has with his sheep. And I got a little, oh, itty bitty sheep right here. I don't know if you can see it. Let's see if I grab them. Got one little bitty sheep here in my nativity set. So we can think of ourselves like this little sheep, and we can think of Jesus as the good shepherd. And we're going to use Joseph again because my shepherds are missing. So if this is the good shepherd, and this is the sheep, and we are the sheep, and Jesus is the good shepherd, we can count on him to connect with us, to be there for us, to be our God and our Savior that we can always rely on and count on in our lives, in the good times, in the bad times, in the, the days when we're working on our e-learning and the Wi-Fi goes down and or we're frustrated because, you know, we miss our friends. I miss my friends. You know, we miss doing all the things that we used to do. Um, we can count on Jesus to help us deal with those struggles and those challenges, right? So let's see if I can put Joseph and the sheep back here without knocking the whole thing over. Let's see. Nope, I think we're all right. There goes our little sheep. There we go. So um, let's see. So Jesus, as the good shepherd, he wants all people to be his sheep. He wants all of that for all of us. But in order to do that, like I said earlier, you know, we have to choose to follow him when we trust Jesus as our Savior. And that means that each of us believe that we are God's son or daughter, you know, that, that we have that kind of relationship with God. And that when he died on the cross 
for the sins of the world, that meant us too. That means me. That means you. That means your your loved ones in your house and your loved ones all you know across the country or the world or wherever they may be. All of us. Um, and when you trust that, you belong to Jesus, just like those sheep belong to the Good Shepherd. Um, and Jesus loves us. He loves us very much. He really does. You know, and when you're in those times of struggle, those times of joy, sometimes you can, you can feel that love. You can pray. Um, you can have that conversation with God, um, even just quickly before a meal or um, saying a quick par- a prayer before you start a difficult class. You know, maybe it's your math class or your ELA, or maybe you're like my daughter and uh, you're now trying to learn Spanish uh, virtually, which is interesting. So, but, you know, Jesus can help you with those things, too, because he wants to meet all of our needs. He wants to be that shepherd that takes care of us no matter what. There are a couple of other scriptures that kind of refer to this. Um, One of them is uh, Psalm 139, uh, Psalm 31, and uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 28. In Psalm 139, it talks about, you know, Lord, the, Lord, you have searched me and know me. You know when I sit down and when I stand up. You understand my thoughts from afar. You observe my travels and my rest. You are aware of all of my ways. Where can I go to escape your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I live at the eastern horizon or settle at the western limits, even there your hand will lead me. For it was you who created my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb, and I will praise you. Now, that's not a verse that you guys have to memorize because that's very long. But you could certainly choose to look at a part of that and pick one of those verses out. And we'll have um, some other verses that you can look at um, at the end of this if you want to do some extra work. I know some of my TNT kids out there like to get uh, extra verses. Um, So... With that, uh, let's remember that Jesus is our good shepherd. He is there to, to care for us because he loves us. And he loves us so much that if even one of us were to wander away like the sheep did from the shepherd occasionally, he would come and he would find us. And he would gather us up and, and show us that he loves us by his care and his concern. So don't ever feel Like, you can't talk to God. You don't have to have the fancy words. You know, like some of the pastors, when they pray out loud, I'm like, oh boy, I wish I could pray out loud like that. I always feel like maybe I say not the right thing, or maybe I get a little nervous sometimes, you know. But God hears you. He hears exactly what you mean, even when your words don't come out right. So you can trust that when you pray to God, whether it's a little prayer, you know, Lord, please help me with my math test, or a big prayer because, you know, you've got a friend or a family member in the hospital and you want to pray for those doctors and pray for those nurses and, you know, all the people involved in their care, you could have a a long prayer and Jesus hears them just the same. So it's always good for us to remember that because Jesus is our good shepherd, he is always there, even when sometimes we don't feel it. He's still there, and we can always, always, always reach out to him in prayer, reach out to him by singing our favorite uh, worship songs, maybe from VBS or Awana or just the ones we like in church. You know, we can have that connection with our good, sh- good, with our good shepherd, our Savior. He wants that for us. He wants that connection. So as you uh, go through these next few lessons before Christmas, um, take some time to think about that. Take some time to think about what being a good, what Jesus being a good shepherd could mean in your life. And maybe even take it a step farther and think about how you could be a good shepherd to the people in your life, the people that you love and that you care for. How could you show the love that you have for Jesus to them? You know, maybe it's uh Helping your little brother, big brother, little sister, helping grandma, you know, helping mom and dad, um, doing something nice for someone you love, doing something nice for somebody you don't even know. These are all ways that we can show Jesus' love to the world. And this is a really special time, this time of Advent, um, where there's a lot of opportunities 
to potentially even talk to somebody about our faith. I know we've had some sermons about that lately, about reaching out and making those connections, because connections are so important. So let's just remember as we close up this lesson that Jesus is our good shepherd, that we're celebrating this uh, season of Advent where we prepare our hearts to celebrate the birth of Christ. And whether you have a little nativity set or not, you can remember that. You can read some of those Bible stories about Jesus's birth um, and maybe even learn some of those verses. And so with that, I miss you all so much. I really do. Each one of my TNT faces out there, you know, I really, really do. The Sparkies, the Cubbies, the volunteers and the leaders, you know. I miss all of you. So hello to each of you out there. Um, I hope that, uh, that you enjoyed this message, and I look forward to recording another one for you next week. All right? Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>